one that's climbed from.
overcame the darkness through some Jesus Christ. Because if you go back from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it's the same situation. Darkness is always overcome by the light. Always. The world came into existence by a couple words. Let there be light, and there was light. And here through Israel's dark period, God has sent the Son to be that light, to be that counselor for us, that mediator between God and man, the man of Christ Jesus. And again, we see him testify more of that light. Again, the first chapter of John is a famous chapter. In the beginning was the word, the word little, was with God. We know that. But also, if you go further down, it says this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And that's the fact what I just mentioned. All the way from Genesis to Revelation, the constant theme of light always overcoming the darkness, mm -hmm. always coming through, mm -hmm. always destroying the works of Satan. Mm -hmm. Because Israel was going through a period which is something we even go through in our personal life. We sometimes turn away, we sometimes make mistakes, and we sometimes, even in our past life, we look up and say, Lord God, where are you? Why haven't you done this to me? Why haven't you done that? But matter of fact, this is just shown, the Bible just shows that God keeps his promises. And even now, the promises of the Son will be fulfilled when we come again. But I'll just continue on that theme of life, because again, all throughout the Bible, all throughout, Christ has always said he is the light. And that through him, we are also light. Like the famous verse in the Bible that we are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And the fact is, just because Christ is the light, we also should shine our light. We should always shine our light in every situation. In every situation where there may be pain, hurt, hatred, let there be love. Let there be things that are not about conquering, not about overcoming things with violence, but with love. Because of Israel's problem, it wasn't the fact of, again, big nations taking over, or they feel, they feel like, you know, they need a king, a conqueror. They needed a savior. And that's all of us, we all need a savior. And the fact is, when even Christ came, we all remember when he rode through that town, but rode from Jerusalem on a donkey, he laid on palms. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, King of David. But the fact is, they thought that that king was going to go and overthrow Rome. Mm -hmm. But in fact, that king did something very little. And for that, they thought this man could not be the Messiah. How could a child lying in a manger, nor if Rome would be the Messiah? But that's the beauty of it all. Yeah. That in God, in what we seem to be God's weakness is actually his strength. Christ actually overturned the thing, showing us that love is the way to conquer the darkness. It isn't, again, like I said, violence. Or that is love. And there's no greater love than a man to lay down his life for another. That's what Christ Jesus has done for every single one of us. And the fact is, throughout the New Testament, throughout the Bible, it's just a common theme of just light, love, light, love. And the fact is, the gospel itself, it takes us who are living in darkness, takes us who are in sin, in rebellion, and actually turns that around and flips on his head. Where we deserve punishment, Christ took it for us. Christ actually went through that darkness for us. He went through the horrors of the cross, the horrors of re rejection, separation from the Father. All for this one reason, that love. And even when he went up to Pilate, when he was accused of all these things, the Jews actually could convict him for. Pilate asked him a very, very specific question. What, what, what say you? Why, you? why did you come to do this? Why are you not rebelling? Why are you not doing all this violence? These people made false accusations by him. What say you? And Christ said this. Very simple, John 18, 27. He said this. 
Pilate said to him, You are king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is, who is of the truth listens to my voice. And then Pilate replies to him, What is truth? As I ask you a question today, do you ask that question, What is truth? Do you know that Christ is the truth? Because when he said he's the way, the truth, and the life, it's not quite a statement of, of just a title. These are very literal. He is the only way you can be reconciled for your sins. He is the only way you can have life. He said, I come to give you life, and life more abundantly. And he is the truth. And what does that mean? The truth. Truth is something which, again, is a standard that will never be broken. A standard that us as humans, we fail to meet. Because our truths can be subjective, can be tips and top, they can be like a seesaw. It can be true one day, not true the other day. But Christ's truth is everlasting, eternal. And as I say, go back to the Israel. That's what they needed truth. The truth of God. They didn't need a conference, they needed truth. And that was through Christ. And I guess fast forward on. If you go to, again, Revelation, because I'm not going to go read it right now, but we know Revelation of Christ is going to come back, his second coming. It's something us Christians look forward to. If anything, it says in the Bible to rejoice at that fact, that our redemption is coming soon, that this darkness that we're going through, the, the uncertainties of our government, the sickness going around is so, can be so like discouraging. But the fact is, God sees it all. And before Israel actually turned up their head and said, where is God? He has abandoned us, he has left us. But matter of fact, he is very faithful and true to his promises. And even to this day, the promise that he'll come again and set everything right, that is our hope we live for. And I go back to the fact that we are the light. So while we, it, while we are in the world, we are to be the light. And what do we do? Well, in Isaiah, chapter, chapter 60, verse 1 to 3, it says this, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and fit darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you, and the nations shall come to you, your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. So what does this all mean? It means, go out and shine your light. Go out and proclaim the truth. Go out and live out the life that Christ lived. This is your hope. This is your testimony. This is what you're called to do. We're all ought to do. And the thing is, it's very easy to be consumed by that darkness. I can testify it for myself. I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot of things. And, you know, darkness has definitely been in my life. We all have our element of darkness. Loss of a family member. Loss of jobs and many other opportunities. And we sometimes shake the fist of God and we shouldn't. Shouldn't be, but we do. It's our nature. But the thing is, like I said before, God is faithful. He's faithful when we are doing the good things, and He's faithful just in the bad. As I said with Israel, if He's faithful to Israel, how much more is He going to be faithful to you? Israel was constantly going back, even when they delivered them out of Egypt, constantly repenting against Him. But the fact is, He's given us redemption. Redemption. He redeemed us through Son Jesus Christ. That's why we are so joyful in this time of year. Because He's given us such a great gift. It isn't the gift of, well, what presents you like, new handbag, or you need a lot of stuff, but it's the gift of eternal life. A gift of eternal life which will never fade. And the fact is, I'm going to leave you a couple words from Jesus Himself. In Luke 21, Verse 25 to 28. He actually describes about how he will come, about how he will return, about how he will set this master plan into motion, I like to call it. And he says this There shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, and on earth distress of the nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. People fainting with fear and with for bonding. Of what is coming on the world. For the power.
powers of the heavenly will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these great things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because the redemption is drawing near. Those are words which we should rely on today. Our redemption is coming near. Ever so near. Every day come closer to that time where he will return again. And the fact is, we can go through life, forget about this, we can go through life living in our darkness. But I for one won't do that. I for one will rise up. And I urge all of you to rise up and really shine your light in this dark world, shine your light. Whether that be in a workplace, whether that be wherever you be, just shine your light. Because I put it like this way, in this whole week, myself, I've actually seen a lot of darkness, a lot of pain, a lot of torment, especially leading up to the sermon itself. And I question God, like, what's going on? Why is it happening? But the fact is, throughout every single day, I've noticed how he used one thing, and it changed all together to another. And it came to me, and I realized that life is like a car. We're all driving this car of life. And the fact is, sometimes you go bumps in the road, and the car still moves, it's still going on. But then eventually, the car sort of breaks down. And you're trying to find help, but you can't do it. You're trying to repair this car by yourself, but you can't do it. But then, you've got two options. You can continue trying to fight with yourself, trying to fix this car, or you can call for help. And again, when you call for that help, he fixes your car. But only fixes your car, he drives it for you. He promises that, you know what, you may mess up, you may go through the wrong turn, but I'll direct you in the right place. I will put you on the right path. I will redeem you. I will bless you. And that is our Savior Jesus Christ, who came not to, again, condemn us, not to beat us down. He knows our state already. He knows all of our state. But he came to redeem us and bring that light and bring us that hope, that everlasting hope. So, what we're trying to say here, I think at the end of the day, that light is something which this world needs. Light is something which, again, always overcomes the darkness, no matter how small. And I just say, you open up to that light, accept that light with open arms, not turning back. <laughs> To the darkness because there's nothing there for you. But turn to the light, serve him, love him, and love of course one another. Because love is the greatest thing out of all these things. As Paul said, out of hope, faith, and love, love is the greatest thing. Love overcomes all. And finally, in First Thessalonians chapter 4, where Paul wrote verse 14 to 18, he talks about the Return, the return of Christ, the return of the Savior. And he says this. No, he says this. Finally, brothers, we ask you and urge you in the Lord, as you received us how you ought to walk, walk, how you ought to, walk to please God, just as you're doing, that you do so more and more. So, this is a message to the first. The festival of the church. But to move on to what I was actually going to read, it, it was mentioned about how he is going to come soon, that we have lost loved ones, we have lost things, but we ought to encourage each other the fact that life will always overcome the darkness. Christ will always come back and overcome this. And it's something that we all need to reflect on, all need to realize. So, this is my message today. So, never forget that. As small as it may be in your life, never forget. And always cling on closer, always cling on to Christ. Because He'll take you out of whatever problem you have, depression, whatever it may be, He'll take you out of it. And it may not be a smooth journey, but He can promise you a safe life. And He'll always promise you that you'll land safely in heaven with Him. So, we're looking to say his amen and praise the Lord because we're going to follow that life. Amen. So, uh, I guess the next song. I don't have to be sensible to play, he's like a waymaker. He's a light of my darkness. And 
that is who he is. And that is who he is to be in our prayer life. That is who he is to be in our prayer life. Amen. <clears throat>